uh, welcome back. So, um, so uh, in the previous video, uh, we uh, introduced the WKB method. And um, so now uh, let's try and use that method to solve the equation that we have been considering so far, which is again epsilon y double prime plus 2y prime plus y equals 0, where y is the dependent variable. Uh, this equation has been suitably non dimensionalized. Uh, x is, uh, we'll take it to be a spatial variable, which goes from 0 to 1, and epsilon is the small parameter. Uh, and the boundary conditions are that y at x equals 0 is 0 and y at x equals 1 is 1. Um, so in order to use the WKB method, uh, if you recall from the previous video, uh, we need to make the ansatz that the solution y uh, can be written as e to the power of an expansion in powers of some function s of x, which looks like this plus s1 um, plus higher order terms. Um, now, uh, we need to figure out all these functions, S0, S1, up to the, the, the number of terms we want to retain. And also, we need to figure out the dependence delta as on the small parameter epsilon. Um, so let's take this as uh, our sort of first, first uh, uh, one of the first things that we should try and figure out. Um, now, one of the ways of doing this is to uh, is to, is, to, is to go back to um, the, the, the sort of picture that we had about how the solution behaves um, and see, uh, so, sort of get more of an intuition uh, of how to extract this dependence from that picture. Uh, and it turns out that this method is quite general uh, and is sort of a generalization of the method of dominant balance that we have talked about before in terms of uh, where we used it to solve uh, for certain, uh, for, for at least two varieties of the quadratic equation that we have we've looked at. So, uh, so let's look at how that works out. Um, and and uh, just as a reminder, the picture that we have was as follows, that we have our solution, um, which goes from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Um, so there is the boundary condition that at x equals 0, y is 0. And what we found is that the solution y changes from its boundary, con its, its value at the boundary x equals 0, rapidly over a, over a region whose thickness we now are characterizing by the variable delta. Uh, it goes to some value and then it was decreasing to its value at the other boundary condition y at 1 which is 1 and it was 0 here. So y at 0 is 0. And it's this thickness which is what delta characterizes. And we need to figure out how this delta depends upon epsilon now. Okay. Um, so so one of the things we can do is we can go back to this equation and uh, rescale the independent variable x, define a new variable x tilde, uh, it, and, and the spirit is very similar to how we use the method of dominant balance for problems, uh, for, uh, for, for, for a singular perturbation problem where we defined a new variable eta which was uh, uh, which was a function of the variable x and the small parameter epsilon in order to convert the problem into a regular perturbation problem. So the, the spirit is, spirit is quite similar. Um, let's see. Let, let, let's just see how that works. And, and the motivation here is that if we rescale the spatial variable in a way that uh, the terms... So what does it mean that the solution is rapidly changing? It means that the derivatives uh, are quite large. Right? If, if you have a function phi which changes rapidly over a thin region or, or, or over a very very narrow spatial region, what it means is that the derivative of the function is quite large. So, so, the, so the idea behind making a change of variables is that the derivatives and the function y itself, once we make the change of variables, do not change rapidly, do not depend, or do not change rapidly with respect to that new variable. Um, and once we are able to do that, we can actually compare the coefficients of these derivatives and not worry too much about how the derivatives themselves are behaving. Um, so let's see how we can do that. Um, so we'll make a change of variables and define a new variable x tilde which is x divided by delta. Okay, so if x lies within this boundary layer region then x divided by delta uh, would be something that's, that could be characterized as order 1. Right. So over this region, uh, if we make this change of variables, then the derivatives do not change very rapidly. Uh, 
So how do we make this change of variables? So y, if you recall y prime is the first derivative dy dx and what we want is we want to cast this, cast this term y prime in terms of the variable x tilde. So what we can do is we can use the chain rule of differentiation and write this as dy dx tilde times dx tilde dx. Now dx tilde, uh, the derivative of x tilde with respect to x is just 1 over delta. So this will give us 1 over delta dy dx tilde. Okay, so that's, the, that's one of the terms we need to figure out. Now y itself is just a function of x. Uh, so there is no derivative there and so we won't pick out any prefactor so we don't need to worry about that term for now. Um, the second derivative y prime is uh, we can write it actually as d dx dy dx and then we can apply the chain rule both here and here. Uh, so this will give us d dx tilde and then uh, inside we have d dx tilde y dx tilde dx and then dx tilde dx. So this will give us one factor of 1 over delta and this will give us another factor of 1 over delta. So we can write this as 1 over delta square d2y dx tilde square. Okay. Uh, so in terms of the variable x tilde, we can write a differential equation as uh, epsilon y double prime which is epsilon divided by delta square d2y dx tilde square plus 2 times y prime which will give us 2 divided by delta dy dx tilde plus y equals 0. Okay. Um, so again the idea is that now these terms um, do not fluctuate rapidly over the spatial variable x tilde. Okay, so we have sort of, uh, we want to figure out uh, a delta such that these terms uh, can be considered uh, to be scaling similarly, but, and, 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 and in fact, the scaling of the whole term, this one, now depends upon the prefactors that appear here. Okay, so that's the main idea behind this change of variables. Um, and now we can go back and apply the method of dominant balance and figure out which pairs of the which pairs of terms uh, we can make we, we can which of the two terms we can make uh, to scale similarly so that they turn out to be the dominant terms of this equation uh, and that will give us a relation between epsilon and delta and therefore give us how delta could depend upon epsilon um, so so let's try that out um, So again, uh, there are basically, uh, in, in general, if you have three terms, we have three possibilities, but we can already ignore one of the possibilities, which is what if we ignore this, these, this term and make these two terms scale similarly. Uh, if we were to do that, um, or maybe we could just try it out. If we were to scale, if these two terms were to scale similarly, then what we are uh, requiring is that the prefactor two over delta scales as order 1 or rather delta scales as order 1. Now if that were the case then the first term let's just check what the coefficients of all the terms are. The coefficient of the first term would be epsilon divided by delta square but delta scales as order 1 so this will just be epsilon. The coefficient of the second term is 2 over delta. Delta scales is order 1 so that will just be 1 and the coefficient of the third term is 1 that's 1. So this particular scaling does give us a pair of terms that are dominant because these are order 1 whereas the, the, the term that has the highest derivative is of order epsilon which in the limit that epsilon goes to 0 uh, is very small. But if we were to pick out this scaling then what, what that does is to leading order we will, have, we will drop this term and that converts this quadratic, uh, this uh, second order linear differential equation into a first order linear differential equation. And that necessarily means that we will not be able to satisfy both the boundary conditions. So this particular scaling uh, will not be able to give us a solution that's valid uniformly in the entire region from 0 to 1. We can satisfy one of the boundary conditions. And in fact, if we do solve 
for this equation. Uh, we'll find that we, we can satisfy what's the outer solution as we described in the previous video, the region that captures the outer solution, but not the region that's in the inner solution. Um, and that makes sense because what we're saying is that delta is of order one. So essentially we haven't rescaled x tilde to zoom into the boundary layer region because now x tilde scales similarly to x. Um, and that and that not and, and 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 if we make that assumption, we not be able to capture um, rapid variations in y, which happens inside the boundary layer region. So, so we need to look at uh, two other possibilities, which are so one. The other possibility is that this term scales similarly to this term, and that means epsilon divided by delta square scales as one or delta scales as epsilon to the power of half. And again, let's just check all three terms. So the first term, epsilon divided by delta square, would then scale as 1. Um, the second term is 1 over delta, or 2 over delta, and that will scale as uh, 1 divided by epsilon to the power of half. And the third term is 1, so that will scale as 1. Now again notice, whereas these two terms scale similarly, they are not the dominant terms because in the limit that epsilon goes to zero, this is the dominant term. And so with this scaling uh, assumption, uh, the equation uh, that we'll have, the, the equation that will contain the dominant term would only contain the middle term. So, uh, so in fact, if we were to go on with this uh, scaling assumption, what that will involve to leading order is to drop this term and this term and it leave us with this linear differential equation which is um, which will give us dy dx tilde is zero or rather y is some constant. Um, now if this were correct then what this says is that in the inner region uh, we have y as some constant which we know is not which we know uh, well if we make it a constant then it it necessarily has to be the boundary condition of y at x equals 0, which means that y is 0 in the boundary layer region, um, which is which cannot uh, uh, which cannot uh, sort of capture the behavior that we have been seeing with the exact solution. So, um, so this is not correct. And, it, and, and actually, the way uh, I've just stated it is, is not the best way to think about it. A better way is that if y equals to a constant were to be a correct solution, then what we're saying is that um, what we could, what one could do in principle is as follows, that we have a boundary layer of thickness delta, which we are claiming is of order epsilon to the power of half. Okay. Um, now what we've done with this uh, change of variables is that we are zooming, we're trying to zoom into the boundary layer region. So we are saying that, okay, in this boundary layer region, there is a constant solution. And then what we could have done is, we could have said that, okay, this is one possible solution. The other possible solution is obtained when delta is of order 1, which was a previous ansatz. That gives us an equation which looks as 2 over delta dy dx tilde plus y equals 0, or not in term, when, x to, when delta is of order 1, then x tilde is x. So we could simply say that the solution that we get, uh, the equation that we get in that case is that dy dx plus y is 0. Uh, with this equation, we can get the outer solution of the uh, outer solution of the differential equation and we could have said that okay there is an outer solution which goes like this to uh, 1 at x equals 1 which we could have satisfied by dropping this term um, and, and by zooming into the boundary layer region uh, if this was correct we would obtain an equation that dy dx tilde is 0 or rather y is a constant so we'll say that there is a solution which looks like this and now what we have to do is we have to find a region where we can match this to this equation, right, right at the boundary. We need to match these two solutions. But that's not possible because uh, if we make this, uh, if, if we say that y is a constant, uh, then that constant should satisfy the boundary condition here. So what we're saying is that, that there is a solution which looks like y equal to 0 inside the uh, boundary layer region, whereas there is a solution that goes like this outside the region. So at, at exactly at the boundary layer, we will not be able to match these two solutions. Um, and so that is sort of a more, uh, a better way to thinking about why this particular ansatz is not the right ansatz. It's only correct if 
we have a solution which is zero at both the boundaries for instance um, I, I think that's the only trivial case when we can match uh, this solution with the outer region solution um, but the other way to think about it is that uh, in the limit that epsilon goes to zero this turns out to be the dominant term and so uh, if we are looking for pairs of terms that are dominant then we better reject this reject this ansatz and think about the last ansatz that we have um, so the last answer that we have is the last answer we have is that this term scales similar to this term and this will give us epsilon divided by delta square scales as 1 over delta or rather delta scales as epsilon now with this answer the first term is epsilon divided by delta square which scales as eps 1 over epsilon. The second term is 2 divided by delta, which also scales as 1 over epsilon, whereas the third term is 1, which scales as 1. And now in the limit uh, that epsilon goes to 0, we find that these two are actually uh, pairs of terms that scale similarly and are also the dominant terms. Um, now, in this case, uh, the whole process sort of works out very similarly to the way we did it for the quadratic equation. But this idea is actually far more general because we can actually use the same arguments to argue that even when these, the, the prefactors of y prime and y are functions of x, they are no longer constants, uh, we'll find uh, a very similar, we can make use of very similar arguments to figure out a pairs of dominant terms and, 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 and thereby figure out how the boundary layer thickness depends upon the small parameter epsilon. Um, so with this, what we found is that delta, which is the boundary layer thickness, actually scales linearly with epsilon in this case. Um, and so, so the appropriate ansatz that we that we can make in the WKB uh, approximation is that in that ansatz we can actually substitute delta with epsilon, and therefore and and thereby work out the terms S0, S1, and so on up to the approximation that we want. So, uh, so let's do that in the next part of the video. Um, yeah, see you there. Thanks.